43 of Isaiah. And then you're going to go to Habakkuk chapter number 2. And when you get it, say praise the Lord. Okay, you're not there yet. Not there yet. When you get Isaiah 43, say glory. Glory. Uh, not enough glory in the room. You're not there yet. All right. Uh -huh. You're still on your way. Morning, Miss Mary. It's so good to see you, dear. How you feeling? Good. You been walking? Three steps. Hallelujah. Did you hear her say three steps? Hallelujah. Are you seeing good out your eyes? How you singing? All right. The light comes in and it works. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. As you're at Isaiah 43, I'll just look at Isaiah 42 and 9 and read that, and then we'll turn to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 42 and 9 declares, The former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Isaiah 43, the whole chapter is so good. I can't preach the whole chapter this morning. I got to stay within the context of my text. But I, I would that you would just look at me and indulge me to go to verse 1. Amen. And we'll read a few verses, but we're going to really get to verse 18. That's where I want to go. 43 and 1. But now, thus said the Lord who created you, O Jacob, the one who formed you. Who's talking? God. The one that made you, that knows everything about you there is to know. He says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name and you are mine he's the God that knows you in a personal and intimate way don't get confused he's not thinking that you're that other Johnny that you're that other Mary that you're that other Sally he knows you by name and by heart and when he wants to speak to you he speaks to you about you where you are and I love it because he says not only do I know you by your name but you've been called by mine that means you belong to him Verse number two is a standing promise that when you go through the waters, you won't drown. The rivers won't take you out. The fire won't consume you. Hallelujah. About to get happy already in my soul. That's a promise to us that no matter what our conditions are, conditions will not destroy purpose in our lives because purpose is greater than conditions. Right. Right. Can I say that again? Amen. Your purpose is greater than your in-between season not having a paycheck. Your purpose is greater than the relationship that just ended. Your purpose is greater than your broken heart. Your purpose in God is greater in your life than the job folk acting foolish. Purpose in you is good enough and great enough that no matter what is happening around you, and even though it's happening to you, it can never consume you. Because God says, you're mine. You've been redeemed for purpose. Verse number 18. The Lord is still talking. He's saying, do not remember the former things. 42 and 9 says the former things have already happened. So stop going back, reliving and repeating what was. Do not remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do. Can you say prophesy to me, Lord? Behold, I will do a new thing, now which shall spring forth, that means break forth suddenly, shall you not know it? And then he goes on to describe specifically the new thing that he chooses to do, and he makes a promise that he will do it for the people that he has formed, he will make streams in the desert, and a way in the wilderness. But it has not yet come to pass at the preaching of Isaiah and the prophesying of Isaiah is not yet manifested. But God has declared it. And why does he tell you beforehand? I love it because the scripture in verses above it in verse 12 says, I want you to know as I proclaim my word to you that I am God and you are called to be my witnesses. So for the thought this morning in agreement with what we've been preaching for the month, I want you to say, picture, picture. This. this, see it, see it. 
like God says it. Picture this. See it like God says it. He declares to the people of God, I'm going to do something new. And it's going to happen quickly and suddenly. But I want you to know, because when I do it, you will be my witnesses to declare how God I am. But you cannot declare it based on what has been. Because if it's a new thing, it's not the same old thing that you've already experienced. Okay. So if it's a new thing, I need you to understand, don't look for the same old, same old. He said, don't expect the former. That's what I mean when I tell you you got to prophesy. you got to speak to what is, what thus said the Lord, until what is becomes what God says it is. But in order for you to have that kind of vision and perception to see it that way, you got to say it and create the picture of words that God has declared. In the scripture Proverbs chapter 20, the Bible says that the seeing eye and the hearing ear are both a gift from the Lord. What that means is, according to Mark chapter 4, that people have eyes and really don't see. That's right. They have ears and really don't, don't hear. Right. So then what's the gift that comes from God? Because everybody don't have eyes that see and ears that hear. It's a spiritual insight. As a matter of fact, the scripture teaches us in Habakkuk chapter 2 that the just shall live by his faith. But the faith of the just is this way. We don't see what we see in the arena of the natural. We see what we hear. So, in other words, for the believer, our organ of sight are not the eyes. For the believer, our organ of sight are our hearing ears. You got to see what he is saying. You got to hear what he is saying for you to see what he is saying. It's not that deep. It really isn't that deep. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Okay, let me say it like this so you can see what I'm saying. Have you ever been driving trying to find an address? Passing the street, looking for the street, looking for the numbers on the buildings. And before you start looking expectantly to see what you need to see, there was some noise in the background. So in order for you to see what you need to see, you simply turn down the radio. That's right. Or if somebody is talking to you, you tell them, don't talk to me now because I'm trying to see. Yeah, I'm trying to see. But if you hear something, it affects how you see something. So there is a connection. You got to hear right in order to see right. If you hear wrong, you will see wrong. So then the connection is for the believer, the just shall live by faith, and faith cometh not by seeing, but faith cometh by hearing the word of the Lord. I, I need you to picture this. I need you to picture this. If God has spoken about you concerning you, as you are getting in agreement with God, you cannot see what you see and say what you see. You got to hear what God is saying, and then according to what you hear God saying, see that in your mind's eye, and then speak what you hear God saying until what God has said then becomes the physical manifestation of what you see. Did I confuse anybody? I want to make it real clear. Habakkuk chapter 2. Here is the prophet of God. What he sees around him is a mess. Somebody say a hot mess. It's not good. He sees the lawless advancing. He sees the wicked prospering. He sees people doing whatever they want to do and look like nothing's happening. He sees the righteous suffering. He sees people that have been waiting on God fainting by the wayside. He sees a world in turmoil, trouble, contention, strife. He just sees a horrible issue all around him. And because of what he sees, he says, I've got to do something about what I see. I want to know really what's going on. In verse number 5 of chapter 1 of Habakkuk, he looks around and among the nations to see what is going on. And then once he sees what's going on, he has some crushes in his mind. I'm not quite sure where you are this morning, but you may be like a back. Because of what you see going on around you, you too have questions in your mind. Like, when God? 
How long, God? Are you really going to do this, God? What's up with you, God? When will manifestation come, God? How long must we wait for promises to be fulfilled, God? And there's nothing really wrong with asking the questions if you're prepared for the answers. Here it is. You don't get the answer that you necessarily want. When God speaks, you just get the answer that he gives, which is the right answer to the question. So whether it is acceptable in your spirit or not, agreeable with your mind or not, when God speaks, just accept it. That's right. If not, then you run the risk of being like Zacharias. When the angel of the Lord shows up in Luke chapter number one and says, I've got good news for you. Your situation is about to change. And the angel starts declaring what God's going to do. And the first thing Zacharias does is he looks and evaluates his situation and he wonders, how can this be done? How is this, is this for real? Yes, yes. How can God do such a thing? Yes, yes. Me and my wife gonna have a baby and I'm an old man, nothing working here anymore. And we've been waiting on a child for many years and no promise is manifested. So because he is not understanding what God is saying to him, he now doubts the ability of God to perform his words and he can't see what God is saying. He cannot picture himself producing a child. And so what God says is, if you can't see what I'm saying, then you would never speak in agreement with what I'm saying. So in order to keep you from messing up what I want to do, I got to shut you up. That's right. Because you're going to keep speaking what you see. Uh -huh. Can we talk? Uh -huh. So you got to see it like God says it. That's right. If you don't see it like God says it, you're only going to speak what you see in your natural mind and arena. And according to the word of God, you will have whatsoever you say. So the more you speak what you see in the natural arena, the more of the same old, same old you get. And in order to switch the channel, in order to change the picture, you got to see what God is saying and say it like God said it. That's right. Amen. You can't say it like you feel it. You can't say it like you see it. You can't say it like you call reality. This is just the way it is. Yes, you got to see it like God says it. So here's the prophet. In this chapter of Habakkuk number two, he's seen a lot and he's got questions before God and he wants to know what is God going to do about what's happening. And so he prepares himself for God to answer. How many of you are in the spirit of expectancy? Oh, don't play with it now. Because there's a posture of expectation. Hallelujah. If you really think God is going to say something, give something, do something, then you've got to position yourself to receive. That's right. Now, most of us, our receiving position is this. That's right. <laughs> Hand out. But when you are prophetic, All right. and I want to know are there any prophets in the house? I gave y'all prophet's license two weeks ago. Any prophets in the house? Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. All right. When you are prophetic, then your prophetic position and expectation is not the same as everybody else's. The natural man's position of expectation is hands out. Yes, yes, yes. But the person who is prophetic has a different posture. And so I'm going to show you what the posture is of the one who's expecting God to say something so you can see something so you can say something and have what you say. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go then. Go ahead. Chapter number two.